this comes to an end, this is one of the all-time great Terrapin comebacks. Final score, Maryland 14, Duke 11. Congratulations, Maryland, with today's victory of the Terrapins advance to the semifinal round next Saturday in Philadelphia. You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Biner Four Gates and the big dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. Good afternoon from Hempstead, New York, on the field here at Hofstra, where Maryland has one of the great wins that I have seen on a lacrosse field for these Maryland Terrapins. I'm Wayne Viner, that's Mason Viner, Bruce is away from the camera today, at least for the first half. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. To start off with the, the great question for today, Mason, how did Maryland come back and stop Duke? Yeah, Luke Weirman took over the game today. It was fantastic from the face-off X. His wings played so well. The communication between those three guys out there, and, and the Terps don't have one set. They have three sets of guys that are in there on the face-off. They played fantastic. He obviously adds two goals to Maryland when they desperately needed it. And then the team just comes together, whether it was Eric Molliver, Daniel Kelly, Daniel Maltz, Braden Erksa. Guys found ways to make plays in this game. They scrapped for every ball. They fought for it until the end. And look, you look up at the scoreboard, and it's a three-goal win. It's a three-goal win. Maryland got the 10-9 lead, and then it was 10-10. It was 11-10. Then it was 11-all, and Maryland ends up with 14-11. It was the ending of that game was an instant classic. I thought this wasn't going to happen through most of the day. Maryland just wasn't playing particularly well. They were bumbling around a bit like they have in the games that they lost. And you started to feel it was Maryland's day when Brennan got a goal at the end of the shot clock. Yeah. And that, that's something that only happened. I think it was the second goal of the year. So you've got players who are playing really hard and they start to get rewarded and it started to click maryland's offense started to get faster and for the last 10 minutes of the game or so they look like the maryland team that beat princeton i'm I, happy never... and stunned all all at the same time yeah i'm not necessarily stunned um you come to a program like this to play games and win games like this and i think that's one thing the players mentioned but i've also never seen a group of guys i think we got five or six interviews right after the game yeah. and then uh, ajax and luke weirman uh, we're in the press conference. I have never seen a group of players, every single one of them said, the coaches won us this game. Yes. The yeah. game plan won us this game. Well, you knew that. No, we I mean, yeah, you were watching that, and what we watch that every day. I mean, we see these guys every game. Yes. Rarely do you see a set of players, every single one of them mm -hmm. say, the coaches prepared us to win this game. The game plan won us the game. Yeah. You mentioned that the in-game coaching – Maryland had such an advantage in their adjustments and how they came back that when Duke was on the, the bad side of things, they couldn't adjust their way out of it. So, yes, John Tillman's one of the best coaches out there. Um, the staff, I mean, every, you're right, every player talks about their coaching. The coaches talk about the players. It is such a well-run system. The whole thing is something to be proud about and and. Yeah, I actually get emotional about this. We get to go back to the Final Four. These guys who were here with the greatest team ever get a chance to go win their own championship. And we will be back in Hofstra in a moment. Okay, we're here after the instant classic with Nick Red. What happened with that defense in the second half that shut Duke down? Uh, I think we just trusted our game plan. I think we have a we had a great plan going in, going into the game. Uh, you know. We just follow the game plan, trusting each other, do what we've, been, what we've been doing all year. Lots of ups and downs, but we always fall back on trusting each other. We got a great group, we're very connected, and we just love each other, man. And that makes things like so much better when everyone on the field just trusts each other in so many ways. I mean, it's just it's great. So that's what I would say, man. All right, you came to Maryland, Mr. Canfield, for a game like today, I assume. Yes, sir. This is why you come to Maryland. What was it like trying to cover Brennan O'Neill? Uh, I think it's just a great matchup. I think we had a good scheme, the whole team, and uh, it was just all uh, game plan. Jesse put in a great plan. So, Well, congratulations on a great win. Thank you. We, uh, one of the greatest wins oh, yeah. ever oh, yeah. as in a long time. Took, there's nothing better than beating Duke. <laughs> what happened with this team from when you're trailing 8-5 to five to hitting the Rockets and taking hey, off there? Got to give it to the coaches, man. They got the best game plan for us. So They always prepare us the best. So, Got to give it to them. 
Since 1991, Viron Forgates has completed thousands of projects across the DC metro area and around the globe. Use Viron Forgates for your next IT project. Hey Rick Jackley, who's your favorite number one term? Stefan Diggs, DJ Moore. Really? Now, come on, you know. Rakeem Jarrett's always been my favorite number one. Hey Rock Jarrett, who's your number one? The Rick Jackley's Law Group. Why? Awesome trial results, unbelievable customer service, Plus, you've taken great care of my mom over the last 20 years. Just some of the reasons that the Jackless Law Group has been voted the number one personal injury trial firm in the entire USA. If you're hurt, call the Big Dogs. 855-BIG-DOG-1. All right, Maryland playing a little stall ball. 50 on the shot clock. Three minutes and five seconds to go in the game. Scores! It's Maltz again! What a comeback! It's not a goal? We're going to go to our replay here. We're back in a minute. Back here on the field. It's starting to rain, as promised. Mason, what did you see in the game? Yeah, I think we just talked about the coaching and the adjustments. A couple things on that. One is the Terps, their offense, um, finding ways to get the shorties uh, at X again through their invert. And, and right now you're seeing a team that just has six offensive players. They're not necessarily midfielders. They're not attackmen. You can see that in the way they sub every possession one of the midfielders that's in the bottom right isn't you know scrambling to get off the field instead the attackmen all run off and then defensively uh, the the slide so effective against Brendan O'Neill always finding a way even when there was a short stick matchup to hedge a slide complete it and then recover through it if you go back and you watch the goals it was that failure to recover where Dyson Williams who's one of the best goal scorers the straight up shooters that I think we've seen in, in recent memory uh, he's a lot of the Anthony Mayo and just finds a way to get shots off and they're absolutely rips and, and they find the back of the net so six yeah goals. I think he scored six six today but the Terps slide and recover uh, process there to leave that guy at X alone Ajax Zapatil completely eliminated Josh Sawada from the game uh, as expected really surprised only took about two dodges from uh, Brendan O'Neill the entire game but being one of the best poles he just takes guys off the field uh, and I will will echo that sentiment that you watch this defense and they're trading off on Brennan O'Neill, who, uh, although his team didn't win, he made some magnificent shots. Duke had some great, wonderful offensive goals, but they couldn't do it consistently. And Duke had a chance to put Maryland away. The game got stuck at about eight to five. And you start to think about next goal makes it really hard to come back. But if Maryland could get back in this, and as you know, Maryland did get back in this. So we're going to skip ahead to what do you think about next week? When do you start thinking Final Four? How long do you celebrate beating Duke? Yeah, when you're part of this program, you don't celebrate things like this much. Uh, the, the, what matters is happens on Memorial Day, and these teams still have that uh, hope alive for them. So I would say, you know, classic thing, 24-hour rule, but maybe we'll play about this time to tomorrow, and these coaches will get to work uh, like they always do, break down the game plan, and look, give a John Tillman team a week to prepare, whether that matchup's against Virginia or it's against Hopkins. Uh, I, I like our chances next week. All right, for Bruce Posner. I'm Wayne Viner. This is Mason Viner. We'll be back with part two with Bruce in a little bit. Thanks for watching. This has been the Big Dog Post Game Show. Oh,